A few years back, my old headphone system had a daisy chain of Mackie 16-channel mixers. Six of them. Hi, I'm John Tendy. You probably saw that video, and it was time to toss that setup. And what I replaced it with was iPads and HP2s, four of them, and it was the perfect solution. Great system, and that's not going anywhere. It stays right here. But when I needed more headphone monitors, I wanted to take advantage of the Series 3 AVB capabilities and have a hybrid setup by adding four Presonus Earmix 16M headphone monitors. Now, what got me interested in the Earmix 16M is not just that it's designed to work with the Studio Live Series 3 mixer, but it's also potentially compatible with other emerging AVB-enabled audio systems, which communicate over an AVB network. AVB, or Audio Video Bridging, offers low latency, two milliseconds, a cleaner signal path than long lengths of copper, and Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6e cable is ridiculously cheaper than 16-channel Snake. It's actually cheaper than a single XLR cable. So let's go over the layout of the Earmix 16M and its features. Connection is simple. One Cat5e or higher cable connects from the network Ethernet connection on the back of your mixer to the Earmix AVB in. This connection is not powered, so you'll need to use the included power supply. From this connection, you can daisy chain multiple Earmix units, up to seven in one chain. And for more than seven, you can use a separately purchased SW5e AVB switch which also supplies power over Ethernet. Audio connections include a stereo headphone out, a left-right line-out pair, and a stereo eighth-inch auxiliary input. The line-out is for a performer who prefers hearing his or her mix from a pair of stage monitors rather than headphones, and this is particularly useful in a quieter acoustic setting. A church would be a good example of this, a chamber ensemble, maybe an industrial that includes speeches, music, and a video presentation. You might not want to wear in-ears if you're the presenter. The auxiliary in allows you to connect your own personal audio device. For example, the rhythm section is doing a sound check and the singer wants to listen to a vocal reference while waiting. Or a drummer can plug in his or her own click without using up an actual channel on the headphone mixer. Around the front, there are 16 buttons on the bottom, one for each channel. Choose the channel you want to adjust by pushing the corresponding button. EQ controls include bass, treble, and a sweepable mid. Choose the mid frequency you want to adjust and cut or boost with the mid-level knob. Each channel has its own separate limiter and panning. Now, when I first tried the limiter, it didn't seem to do anything. So I panned it to the left and I sent that line out to an input on my mixer and I checked the level. It was actually reducing beautifully. It was just so transparent, I didn't actually sense the limiting. And that limiter, by the way, is per channel, not master only. Individual limiting on a personal headphone mixer is a godsend. This is especially useful when a guitar turns his distortion on or off. The level will change in an instant. And rather than the whole mix being pushed down by a global limiter, only one channel will be affected. Mono is also a fantastic feature. It's great if you're going to take off one side of your headphones during a solo or if you want to listen to the stage for a bit. The select button is to choose the master bus and adjust its own EQ and limiter as well. There are store and recall buttons and the group button allows you to select a combination of tracks. Adjust the volume of one and all the others in the group will be adjusted proportionately. And that's very useful if you've got a group of background vocals or a combination of keyboards and of course a drum set. The link button attaches stereo pairs on neighboring odd and even channels. Now there's no actual reset button, so while pressing and holding store and recall, hit the number one. It's actually easy enough to do with one hand. I also like to store a reset button on one of the 16 memory locations. I actually have two, one with everything at one third level and one with everything all the way down. The separately purchased hardware mounting kit is a must, and it's well worth the extra expense. It can be configured to clamp onto the mic stand pole or onto the stand's threaded mic clip mount on top. And speaking of mic stands, if you're going to use this in a studio, you can get a pair of array stands for about $26 from B&H. That's for two stands. Now, I wouldn't trust these stands for mobile use when they're going to get thrown around in a truck every day, but in a vocal booth where they stay in one place, it's more than adequate. I also like those headphone hangers from Array. They're like seven or eight bucks. The knobs have a nice fluid resistance, which I really like. They feel much more sturdy. They feel much more expensive than the competition. The knobs have ridges on them, so they're easy to grab and they're easy to rotate. They're also easy to clean. Just spray a little Windex onto a clean cloth and wipe them off. So if last night's trombone player had grubby, greasy fingers from the cocktail hour, these will clean off pretty easily. 
You know, it always comes down to trombone jokes, doesn't it? <laughs> and as a courtesy to the performer, keep your gear clean. I've gone on to jobs, I've walked onto stage, and I've looked at the mic or the headphone amp, and I'm like, I'm not even gonna touch that. What is that on the volume of dried guacamole? If I were to nitpick one little thing, the contrast between the lettering and the light blue, light gray could be a little sharper. The lettering under the knobs could be a little bigger. Stage lighting casts an uncompromising shadow, and that shadow happens to fall right where some of the labels are. But the important stuff is well lit, and a little familiarity solves all problems. So what do I think? I think it's fantastic. The layout is logical. EQ mid-sweep limiting on each channel. The output is loud. Lots of headroom. AVB reliability is unquestionable and you'll save hundreds, perhaps thousands in wiring if you're upgrading from an old school monitoring setup. Look, we all know the importance of a proper headphone mix. If you're working in a production room, a performer wants the luxury of taking a few extra moments to dial in a proper headphone mix. And if you're doing live sound, musicians can be downright nasty when their headphone mix isn't right. This system solves so many problems. The only problems it can't solve are those that are the result of an engineer who has not done the proper testing and has not put in the time to know the system inside and out. I once saw an engineer literally opening Sweetwater boxes on the job. How do you think that went? Not well. This is a pro rig with depth to it. Because you got to know the board too. This isn't a Mackie 8 bus. So if you're doing live sound, don't buy something today and expect to use it tomorrow. Give yourself a week. Set up a mock session or two. No matter how much preparation you put in on your first gig with your new setup, live or in your production room, something will go wrong but with familiarity, you will be able to solve the problem quickly. Musicians are a tough room. Some are mixer savvy and some are not. And those that are not, are not gonna get a good mix on their own. You're gonna have to help them, so know your gear. There's much more to the Earmix 16M than I can put into one video. So I'm going to post some tutorials here and there on my Facebook page, Tendi Media, and on this YouTube channel. Personas has done an amazing job in developing a headphone system as part of a bigger ecosystem that sounds great, has ear protecting features with channel by channel limiting and will be less and less proprietary as other developers adopt AVB networking. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe and don't forget to follow and like Tendi Media on Facebook. I'm John Tendi. Thank you for watching.